Guys, I want to thank the sponsors of this episode, Honey, joinhoney.com slash views, and the ZipRecruiter job search app. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Views, the podcast where Jason and I... Jason has something stuck in his teeth right now, and he's smiling at me. Oh, thank God this is only audio. <laughs> only at the side. Ugh, it looks really gross. What did you eat? You were picking your ass next to Natalie earlier, so I, don't talk to me. I wasn't picking my ass. Uh, I yes. was grabbing my ass cheek. Okay, you are playing with your balls and your ass. I was not putting my balls. Sitting... Natalie, was I playing with my balls? I was not playing with my balls. I was grabbing my ass. She's nodding her head, yes. That's because she thinks I was playing with my balls. I was, I was grabbing my ass cheek, and I was, pre- I was pretending it was someone else showing me affection because I recently <laughs> got a divorce. Oh, my God. I know. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I divorced Jason's mom, mm-hmm. and I'm going to be here for her whenever she needs me, even though we're getting a divorce. All right, roll the intro music. <laughs> What's up, guys? This is the Views Podcast. I'm David. That's Jason. And this is the David and Jason Show. Um, I want to start off. Aaron's here as well. I said, Hello, I'm here. <laughs> Hello, I'm here. Aaron's one of our friends. Um, I got to surprise her with um, paying off her wedding the other day, which was really fun. Well, contributing. I wouldn't say paying off. <laughs> <laughs> How much is your wedding going to be? I We were planning. We gave her $50,000. How fucking expensive no, is wedding? No, for the venue and the food alone, it's $30,000. And the venue's only 5800 And what's the other twenty? Where's that going to go? Well, Figuring for the blow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the for all the drugs. <laughs> what, Jay? You, got, you guys got to the joke before I did. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so what are you planning on doing for your wedding? What do you mean? I'm really nervous. I was telling yesterday I was in the car. Yesterday I was in the car with Jeff. And we were sitting up front. And Carly was sitting in the back. And out loud, out loud, I go, I just really hope Aaron doesn't cheap out and not use all that money on the <laughs> wedding. And Jeff goes, well, I'm glad you said it loud because then Carly's going to tell her this in private. <laughs> and I'm like, yep, that's why I said it. What I, do you I mean just wa- cheap out? I just want to make sure you use all the money I gave you on like throwing like the coolest wedding. I- I'm not oh, saying like yeah, a... Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying like invite more people than you should i'm saying like i know you want like a small wedding right like a, a smaller wedding Yeah, we have a 180 person guest list am i invited me. yeah <laughs> was i invited before <laughs> i don't want to disclose that information <laughs> I, I yeah I, I honestly just did it just so I, I i asked if i can if i can sit right on the altar in like one of those i pick chairs like a reclining <laughs> chair on the altar so i have like front seats and i'm just watching it with popcorn he also wants his own cake topper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want I want to be on the top of the cake with a vlog camera right over them. That um, would be so cute. Is he going to be able to vlog your wedding? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. I was going to let him even prior to him. I'm so me excited. Lots of money. What are you most looking forward to about your wedding? Uh, just like having a party with all our friends. Are you regretting the decision to say yes? No. no okay. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> cut the part out when I said yes. <laughs> no, I, I, not at all. I'm wondering what, what happens. What happens if you guys decide not to get married? Do, do you keep the money? What do you What do you spend the money on? Oh, I know. I was thinking about that the other day. Like, whoa, what if we ever get divorced? I'd feel so bad that he gave me so much money. Well, that, no, because then the wedding would stop. But what if the wedding oh, never yeah. even happens? I mean, it will. Knock on wood. I don't want to jinx myself. David, you trying to get the money back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, so let's just say I was to stop this wedding. <laughs> I'm like, I know you just divorced Lorraine, but I am still getting married. <laughs> and Carly, if you like stop driving, like what would happen to the Tesla? Can I? Would it, would it come back to me? Can or? I have the car back? I'm running out of money. <laughs> it's so funny. I tweeted. I was like, wow, like so sweet. David must have really wanted to be invited to my wedding. And so many of the comments are like, well, yeah, he gave you fifty thousand dollars. Like, yeah, that's literally <laughs> that's a joke. the joke. <laughs> What's up? What are you scared? Are you nervous about the wedding? Yeah, because I hate when the attention is on me. Like, I like break out in hives. Oh, and, you do. You ge- you actually break out in real hives. Yeah, like I get so just like overwhelmed. So I'm like, I did, yeah. I, the first time you told me, I thought you were kidding, but then no. but then you got nervous from a situation. It's you great. had you had hives. It's great, you're a YouTuber. Yeah, <laughs> you hate the attention. Well, it just weddings are so scary because you're like standing at an altar and like, you know me, I'm a baby. Like I'm literally just going to be crying the whole fucking time. Oh my God. Yeah. It's going to be fucking great. It's yeah. And what day is it going to be? Uh, I'm just trying to figure it out for my vlog posting schedule. I know the day, but I don't <laughs> want to tell people because then I don't want fi- people to figure out where it is. When you were growing up, what did you imagine a wedding being like? What nothing. Is, nothing. I've never like been the type of girl that's like had this cookie cutter idea of like how what wedding dress the, i want to wear okay this like, may be an intimate question jace sure. actually answer this too because you were married mm-hmm. did you have sex when in the wedding dress is that a thing do you have to do that 
I mean, I know you weren't in the wedding dress. <laughs> yeah, I put on the dress. <laughs> and my wife fucked me. It's like me. a rite of passage. <laughs> well, no, because I hear... I feel like you just watch that in porn. Like, I feel like it <laughs> doesn't actually happen. No, I, w- I, was, I think I was watching like a bridesmaids movie or something. And, uh, and the girls were like, you have to make sure the dress is accessible because you have to have sex in it. Oh, no, I never heard of that. Oh, that's not and like I a thing? I have heard of that, but I, that, that's not appetizing to me. No. A girl, I don't, all wedding white and makeup. and That's not appetizing. It's not sexy to me at all. Yeah. I mean, my dress is accessible, so. <laughs> it has like a in little, case. it has a hole in the back, like a yeah. little pocket. I'll leave the option open and let you know how it goes. <laughs> well, I'm going to be there for 20, <laughs> I'm going to be there for the entire. going to do it now. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> um, what are you, what, what are you looking forward? Are, are you looking forward to the honeymoon? Oh yeah. I'm so excited. Where do you guys plan on going? TJ has always wanted to go to Bali, which oh, like, wow. I don't really care about. But since you gave us so much money, we can like <laughs> fly first class and then I'll be like down to do that. <laughs> oh, so where would you want to go if you, you could decide? Probably like Greece. Oh, okay. And like some parts you, of You don't want to go to like a warm been. place? Greece is warm. I guess, but only in the summer. Is it warm in the winter? I don't even know. I don't oh, I guess it is, right? Isn't Greece like nice? Yeah. Like Santa. Oh, yeah, you went. <laughs> I don't know anything. I could be making stuff up again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Greece is 90. <laughs> yeah, I've always. I met, a girl, I met a woman this weekend at the meet and greet, and she goes, she goes, what's going on with David? He's, he's joking around when he doesn't know all that stuff, right? <laughs> and I'm like, no, he's fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fucked up. Um, cut that out. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no. I really want to go to like Greece, like do like a week in Greece and then like a week in Italy. That's I've awesome. never been to either of those places. Are you guys gonna have kids? Yeah, but not for like a while. Yeah. Well, I'm, congratulations on your wedding. Thank you. I'm very excited. Thanks for helping me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm just glad I'm gonna I'm gonna get to come and how much do I get? A plus twenty five? <laughs> what did you? I can bring anybody from my hometown. <laughs> Is that what you said? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even think of them. How fun. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like once we get back all of the people saying they're not going to come <laughs> then i can include more people uh, how much is it how, how much is it for people that don't know how much like a wedding costs like what oh God, it's so much what money. costs a lot i have a 17 so it's, it's the bar the bar how much the is bar that costs so much it's like ten thousand dollars wow and that's just for zane's portion of the drinks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> literally um after we picked the date my fiance was like Oh, do you want to like call David and ask him if he's around that day? Like, just making sure. <laughs> What'd you that say? You can go. And I was like, I don't think he has any plans for next April, but I'll <laughs> ask him when I see him. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. So, where we're doing it, there's a 17,000 food and beverage minimum. So, like, you have to, no matter what, spend $17,000 just on food and alcohol. Wow. So, heavy eaters have to come. Yeah. Jason's, well, luckily, Jason's invited. Luckily, the 10,000 covers the bar and then. It's it kind of evens out. Sure. But, well, um, I'm excited to go there again. Thanks for inviting me. Is Jason right. invited? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh huh. He's your plus one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Perfect. How about we talk about something we can all agree on? Saving money. Honey is a free browser extension that scans the web for coupon codes and discounts while you shop online. Honey automatically applies the biggest savings to your cart at checkout like magic. It works on over 20,000 sites like Amazon, Nordstrom, J. Crew, Nike, Best Buy, Target, Macy's, and more. It takes zero effort to install, guys. It's two clicks away, and you'll start saving money anytime you shop online. Guys, Honey's great. It's literally just a simple add-on. It's so, so simple. There's really no reason not to use Honey. It's free to use and easy to install on your computer in just two clicks. Don't take it from me. Take it from our listeners. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash views. That's joinhoney.com slash views. Honey, online savings simplified. The other day was our friend Stas's 22nd birthday. Um, and Stas, Stas has been wanting like a Tesla for a really long time. Like She always jokes about it. Um, and her, her best friend's Kylie. And Kylie threw this like big, extravagant party for her, like huge. So I'm like, okay, there's a really good chance like Kylie's surprising Stas with this Tesla. Yeah. So like I was really excited for it. And like I was like looking forward to this. And I, and I talked to Kylie because she didn't know what to get her. Um, and then I get a text from Kylie like the, her, on her birthday. And it's a video of Stas like crying in this Tesla. Yeah. And I just fucking, I, I was just like, I was, I was so bummed out that I wasn't there to shoot yeah. it, to record it. Right. I was like, I was like devastated. I was like, Oh, like, I was like, I'm so happy for you. But, <laughs> but really I was just like broken. I'm like, I can't believe she got out of the car and I wasn't there to film it. And like, I was, I like, I couldn't, I couldn't move for like 15 minutes. Cause I was just like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Where were you? I was, I was here at, uh, yeah. at home and I just couldn't believe it. And then I, and then I got a text and then I called, I called them and I was like, so how's the car? And they go, 
oh yeah, we were just fucking with you. No, we didn't get her a Tesla. <laughs> and I was like, are you fucking serious? Um, yeah, so I got I got pranked. I got pranked. It and got the, you. That's a good prank. G- genuinely, the only thing that bothers me in life is is not being able to film something that I've been wanting to film. Sure. And that was that's or the, losing footage or losing footage. And that's that that hit me right where it hurt. I didn't. <laughs> I, I don't think I described properly how like torn I was oh, for not awesome. being able to capture that moment. Oh, that's um, awesome. So they really got me. And then when they told me that they were just fucking with me, it was literally like someone just brought like a relative back from from the dead. <laughs> ah. I was like, yes, it was just a fucking joke. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, that that was awesome. That and says a lot about your mental state. <laughs> that is not right. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. I don't think I'm in the right spot. <laughs> I definitely need help. Um, we had um, our friend Ilya's wisdom teeth taken out the other day. Yeah. That was so funny. Ilya, um, Ilya's like my really close friend. It was me, Jason, and Natalie there, who was my other close friend. And we were, we were, we were waiting for him to get his like teeth done. And Jason goes, Jason texts me and he's like, we should hire a stripper. Yeah. So when he's like under the influence and like, cause we, cause Ilya, uh, Jason was like, I want him to like, Ooh, at somebody. Like I want him to like, what, what did you say? Oggle. Ogle. Yeah. Like I want him to be like, Ooh, at a stripper yeah. or something like that'd be funny for the video. And I said, no, no, no don't worry. He has a crush on Natalie. <laughs> and I was, I was so glad Natalie was around. And then Jason, <laughs> Jason sneaks a picture of Natalie and he goes, well, the stripper's all here then. Yeah. <laughs> and, and dude, and it worked like fucking clockwork. He went under the, well, once he like got under the drugs from the wisdom teeth. Yeah. I, I asked him in private. I was like, I was like, do you like Natalie? And he goes, yep. Yep. <laughs> like and this is like shit he's been holding back from me for like a really like like he's been holding it from natalie for a long time natalie can you come here ilia has been Ilya like a couple months ago told me about like his crush on natalie and he's like you think there's any chance that she likes me and i was like i don't know i don't know and then even dima our other friend would call me and he's like dude Ilya keeps talking about fucking natalie can you just please tell her that he has a crush on her natalie did you know that he had a crush on you not to the extent that he apparently did yeah i always thought like you know, he's a guy. I'm like, why? Why? Aw, <laughs> it's not so that cute. cute. Um, no, but not as much as he did. And when, when Dima like stepped into the conversation was like, dude, we can't talk about this. And I was like, whoa, this is actually real. Oh yeah. No, it's totally real. He would, he'd bring up uh, having a crush on you all the time. Really? Yeah. I, and, so I, and I thought you guys were totally like, like a thing or something. Cause you guys would always sleep in the same bed. So I'm like, oh, I assume they're like, well, yeah, he's like, like, it's like, it's like you. He's like my brother, you know? Oh, that sucks. <laughs> I know. I feel really bad. Poor dude. Oh. Well, is there a chance for him in the future? I mean, you don't want to say yes and you don't want to say no, but I, is... mean, I can't predict the future, but I think if there was going to be a chance, you would need a haircut <laughs> and a shave, <laughs> a haircut and a shave. He was so sweet. He was so, he was so nice. He was he, saying the nicest things to me. Like, yeah, he was, he said, he said, he goes, um, every time I'm around you, my mood, my mood, my mood goes up. My, I was like, Oh my God, my heart just melted. My mood goes he said up. the same thing about me though. Like a minute before he did, he did. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but that, that is true. You never, you never like suspected that he had like a serious crush on you. I never thought it was serious, no. But it's weird because he's your close friend. This is a weird situation. This is like, because he's a really close friend of ours. So he's like breaking some friend walls. Now, I, well, now it's like, Ilya and I have always been really close. Like, when he sleeps over, he'll like sleep in my bed. When I first met you and Ilya, you guys would lie to me and say you guys were cousins. cousins. Yeah, we used to tell everybody that we were cousins in like the fourth grade. He, I've known him. I've known him way longer than I've known you. I've known yeah. him since the third grade, and then he moved away, and then he came back, and we're like, oh my god, Ilya's back! Like he was like the greatest. Yeah. And then he, yeah, that's that's funny. Maybe you guys are meant to be. Maybe. Everybody, everybody that saw the video was like, oh wait. So Natalie and David must not be dating them. Yeah, well, that was it. So I'm glad that cleared that up. <laughs> <laughs> that um, was what needed to happen. <laughs> I, I, I get my I get more wisdom teeth taken out. I also confess my love to Natalie. <laughs> Natalie gets her wisdom teeth out, confesses her love to me. It's a love triangle. Hey, why would I? Why you? Why wouldn't I just admit to Ilya? Oh, fuck yeah, I guess. Yeah, sorry. I just kind of want to be involved in this love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you need your wisdom teeth taken out? No, I, you've asked me enough times, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> everyone I meet now is like, "Hey, how are your wisdom teeth?" Because <laughs> uh, I can get them out. All right, thanks, Nat. How was your stand-up show? It was great. It was really fun. Sold out. Crazy crowd. Sold out what? The hot dogs? Because you were <laughs> I, I ate all. Yes, well, everywhere I go. No, you sold out the place. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Congrats. Yeah, but it was in your backyard. That's what Dima. Dima came backstage, uh, and he was like. He's like, yo, Jason, this is a big flex on David. <laughs> I go, what do you mean? He goes, coming into his hometown, 
like this, pull the place out. David's not even here. He's like, yo, this is a really big flex. <laughs> And you know what's funny? The Alien Dima came out and the people went fucking crazy. Yeah, Dima's weird too. So people probably like that, huh? They loved it. He yeah. got someone asked him a question and he started to like ramble and make no sense. And like anywhere else, you'd, like, you'd be like, you'd want to cut him off. But the people knew him to be a rambler. So they thought the more he rambled, the more they liked it. Oh, wow. It interesting. Awesome. Normally here, we just kind of shut him off <laughs> and we go, please, Dima, please fucking stop. But I guess people appreciate it in different places. We're also here with Jeff and Cody. Jeff is our prison inmate friend and Cody is Jeff's pres- prison. I haven't been inmate. arrested in years and you keep saying that. Thanks. <laughs> Cody's also here. Cody is Jeff's friend who's now our friend. We just brought him out of prison. Um, yeah, but, Cody's fresh out. He got out a week ago. He's got, still very, very institutionalized. You, uh, Cody, I want to say this real quick. You, when you walked in, um, I know you've been in prison for a while so you don't have manners like normal people but you do because you took off your shoes when you walked on the carpet and that was fucking really sweet of you oh yeah uh, I, I treat others how I want to be treated life's a two way street brother yeah man prison really did change you I remember we you didn't know him before <laughs> no no but from what Jeff told me Jeff... well it does you have to apply it to yourself yeah you have to want to change my favorite part was I said this last week on the podcast is Jeff you were calling me out for listening to like shitty music like he was like yeah, this, this kid did David just listens to a bunch of girly music and shit, and you're like trying to make me feel bad. And then Cody goes, "Nah, man, I love that shit. Put on Taylor Swift." And then, and then we listen to Taylor Swift. Hey, Dave, can I ask you something? Yeah. Hey, why do they make sidewalks? Why do they make sidewalks? Why? Because the streets ain't for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's it. That's All Cody. Right. And then here, Jeff. Jeff. So what happened today? Something happened with you. Yeah, this man. is real, by the way. This happened this morning. Yeah, I don't know if it's just because Cody's back in my life now that I've been getting in a, a, a lot of sketchy activity lately. It might be bringing me back to my old roots. I, I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe it's just bad luck, but the cops came to my house what this time? morning. 6 a.m. 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah, so I had a buddy staying with me who kind of was in a little legal trouble, but I didn't think it was a big deal because it wasn't like a serious crime, and it was from a long time ago. Sure. And... You know, I get a bang on the door, and I'm like, who the hell is this? And I look up, and it's Cody's not there. So I, I figure it's Cody. He just locked himself out or something because he makes a lot of mistakes. Like yeah. that. He's a little clumsy. This is, another, this is another prisoner friend you had staying over at your house that wasn't Cody. Yeah, so basically my place right now is like a prison dorm. Even Nerf <laughs> is dressed up in a jail costume. <laughs> Even your dog, laughs. yeah, yeah. Yeah, my dog. Um, so I get this knocking at the door, and I think it's Cody. I see Cody's not on the couch where he usually sleeps, his bunk. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, I go answer the door, and it's four detectives. Oh, it's four detectives? Four detectives, yeah. Oh, get the fuck out. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, of course, they're very aggressive and mean. You know, I'm in my underwear. I just woke up to their knocking. And Are you wearing a shirt? I'm trying to paint this for the viewers, <laughs> listeners. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for my boner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had my shirt on. Okay, you had your shirt on, yeah. and you had your boxers on. Unfortunately, because yeah. if I... David, get your hand out of your pants. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to scare anybody with my physique, so I had my shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to... Get down! He's got his shirt off! <laughs> <laughs> He's too ripped! Yeah. The bullets won't penetrate him. All right, and then, okay, so then what did they say? So, of course, they asked me right off the bat, "Is do you know this guy? And I say, no. They showed you a picture of him? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I say, no, nah, I don't know that guy. <laughs> but you know him? I, well, actually, no, I'm wrong. First, they said, are you the, the name? And then I said, no, nah, nah, that's not me. And I was like, what are you guys here for? You got the wrong house. And then they go, do you know this guy? And I'm like, nah, is, is he here? And I'm like, absolutely not. Are you crazy? And they're like, all right, this is the guy. Cuff him. And I'm like, are you fucking nuts? They you just accu- woke me they up. They accused you of being the guy they were looking for. Yeah. Okay. So then I say, I'll get my ID. Stay right here. They say, we don't trust you. If you leave this door right now, we're going to shoot you. If we, we don't trust now. that you'll, you think you're going to get a gun. So if you leave this door right now, we're going to bust in and we'll pull our guns out on you. So I said, okay, why don't you try Googling me? Because I'm famous, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, well, it doesn't work like that. And they bust him. <laughs> what, are you, what did you think he was going to say? Oh, okay. Chief, we got to Google him. He's a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> I love how David adapts my accent when we talk about these stories. Well, when, when, I, when I think of cops, I think of New Yorkers. I don't yeah, know yeah. why. <laughs> yeah. 
So um, so they cuff me right away and sit me down on my couch. And I'm in my underwear, man. Chief, hold on a second. Let me look here. Oh, fuck, he's famous. <laughs> he's fucking really fu- He's friends with fucking Dylan Francis, freak. We gotta, we gotta let him go. <laughs> yeah, so I'm back in handcuffs, and I'm like, the first thought that goes through my head is David Dobrik is gonna have a field day when yeah, he sees I'm, this. I'm gonna have a good, and I am right now. You're on the podcast already yeah, talking about this it. This is great content. Or did you think it was a prank being played on you? Oh, yeah, did you ever think that it was me, maybe? No, I could tell it was a real deal, because these guys were crooked, they were you know, they, they were the real deal. I've dealt with this situation before. When I was arrested in Miami for my longest sentence <laughs> that I spent in jail, sure. it was an illegal search, and that's why I got off. But so they, they put you in cuffs, and then yeah. they started searching your house without them having a warrant. Yeah, so I'm screaming at them, this is illegal, you're all going to go down for this, I'm taking all your names. Of course, the usual, yeah. you know. Duh. And, then, <laughs> and so the kid that was there, he was asleep. So the guy was actually hiding there, your friend was hiding there. I mean, yeah, he was just a scared kid, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I didn't He wasn't know. hiding. He spent the night. Yeah. I didn't know the situation. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's now, here's these guys bust in. And undercover cops, you don't know if they're cops. You don't know if they're gang members doing a heist. A lot of our friends growing up, they would use that as, like, a technique to do heists because, you know, you just say you're a cop and people would be like, okay, okay, here's my wallet, you know, take my, whatever. Get, get edit around this, please. <laughs> no, I like, I like knowing about this. There you go. Yeah, so the kid is hiding, and they have no idea, and they're just questioning me. They run my name. They find out about my previous you know, arrests and probation, felonies, and all that stuff, all that good, juicy stuff, right? And then I'm about to get let off, and then the door opens, and guess who it is? My parolee friend. Cody. And... My parolee dog in the jail outfit that we had for the video. So Cody, who's recently released out of prison, walks into your apartment yes. while the cops are in there. Yeah, and he'll go to jail with any police contact. You know, like anything in a situation like that, they will just violate him and take him right back to prison. So what happened? So luckily, he was just getting Starbucks and he saw all the cops. He thought it was another prank from you because you decided to prank him the second we picked him up from prison after a four-year sentence. Sure. He thought it was another one of those, but... Um, how did you know, Cody, that it wasn't one of those? Well, when I came into the house, I'm pretty well-rounded with law enforcement. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know how they look and I know how they act. And I seen their badges were tucked in, so I already knew they were corrupt and dirty to begin with. And um, as soon as I opened the door, the dog runs in, and they were like, get the fuck out of here. And I took no, I didn't even respond. I was like, okay, officer, no problem. <laughs> And I left my friend Jeff for dead. <laughs> and um, I texted him when I was down the blocks, asking him if he was okay. And then I looked on the side of the building, and I see two unmarked cars. One was a brand-new uh, Toyota uh, Tacoma, and the other one was a Honda Accord with tinted windows with no license plates. So I knew they were the real deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we knew that David Dobrik doesn't have the budget for these undercover cars, you know. <laughs> so, so they told him to leave. And that was a good thing because if Thank he was there, God. he would have gotten in trouble. Yeah. Wow. He had no idea. You know, this yeah. is him just coming out to stay with a friend. It's really like his only opportunity. You know, like yeah. he didn't have a choice. It's not like he's going to come out to, you know, shop around for homes up in the Hollywood Hills. You know, like 100%. Just... And then they found your friend. Now they find my friend hiding as they're about to leave. They find him because he was scared. He was hiding behind a couch. <laughs> And, and your apartment's pretty small. I'm surprised that they didn't find him earlier. Yeah, you know what? They went out on the balcony and they checked like all the hot spots, the popular hiding spots. I they guess. checked the balcony first and they didn't notice him behind the couch. Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? Fuck him. This guy was a dick, and what he did was illegal. So you know what? I I, I already gave it to him in person. I was a little worried because I was in handcuffs, and every time I've been handcuffed, those handcuffs have never come off yeah. and said, okay, it's your lucky day. I've never experienced that up until today, so that was pretty cool. I thought for sure. I'm like, all right, I'm going to at least spend the night tonight, you know. But they took him off. They took my friend, and his charges weren't that serious, so he got out, you know, bailed him out right away. And, yeah, things are good now, and it's just another piece of content for David, you know. <laughs> It's Dude. it's insane to me that this is what's what insane to me that enjoys. this happened this happened twelve hours ago. Is it already six? Yeah, it's six. It happened twelve hours ago. You you had this encounter at six in the morning. I was napping. I was having a beautiful sleep, dreaming about 
<laughs> I don't know what I was dreaming about. Tooth fairies. And you're being... <laughs> I'm handcuffed in my underwear. And you're handcuffed in your underwear Dude, in your Hollywood it, apartment. It's it's just insane that cops are so okay with breaking the law like that. You know, like they just violated my rights completely. And now I'm here talking about it. How many listeners do you have? A million. That's insane. <laughs> That's the craziest part. Guys, hiring people can be tough. And I know for a fact because hiring Natalie was a big mistake. So what if you had your own personal recruiter to help you find a better job? Now, ZipRecruiter's technology can do that for you. ZipRecruiter can help you find qualified candidates so quickly. It's so simple. It's the number one rated job search app, guys. Our listeners should download the free ZipRecruiter job search app today and let the power of technology work for you. Don't wait. The sooner you download free ZipRecruiter job search app, the sooner it can help you find a better job. So, guys, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Nash and try it out. ZipRecruiter genuinely is the smartest way to hire. Cody, how? You've been out on, out on the streets now nine days. What's going on? What's it been like? It's been a beautiful thing. I'm living sobriety. I'm enjoying the gym. I'm around positive people. And um, <laughs> today was a little hectic. You know, I wasn't ready to go back to prison. Cody sounds like he's covering, like his parole officer is listening. But he's actually like, that, that's the real him. And uh, it's just a wonderful thing about good, positive inspirational people i'm just have you had any good meals or anything that's been nice you, jeff taking you to malibu or anything i had mashros in beverly hills oh wow uh, oh. um i had in and out chick-fil-a bunch of juices <laughs> uh coffee how, how is chick-fil-a it's bomb <laughs> yeah better yeah. than pr- do you miss any of the prison food no no okay so no. chick-fil-a is better. well actually in and out i had in and out in jail you, yeah you don't say that all right <laughs> <laughs> You guys been working out a lot. Who's in better shape now? Uh, we're in different weight classes. Uh, okay. He's 170. I'm 220. This sounds like you guys argued about it before and just settled that. We're in different weight classes. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like you guys were... Yeah. When we go in there, let's just agree to disagree on this, okay? <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Why is it even close? Why does the weight classes matter? I outlift you. I outrun you. Hey, I'm just stating facts. That's why they got featherweight and heavyweight. I'm more of a heavyweight guy. Okay, guys, let's take this outside. <laughs> this. Well, I heard on, in the car that you run, you can run five miles, and th- you run a seven-minute mile, and uh, Jeff can't do that. Okay, I'll handle that, because we do plan on racing. We've been doing Runyon, and Cody's agreement makes sense. He doesn't have mountains in prison. You know, it's all flat in there, you know, flat walls, flat ground. And he didn't get to experience that type of training, like interval interval training that I do every day with Todd. You know, so it makes sense that I smoked him on that. I almost forgot he was there. I had to like think, like, oh shit, I came here with a friend. I got to go back and and make sure he's all right. You know, because <laughs> you were going so fast. I was going so fast. Yeah, I just completely <laughs> forgot that he was there. He disappeared. He was out of my sight. But you know what? It is nice having him around. He's extremely positive and motivating. He's sober like me. And it's good to hang out with other sober people like you. Like, like I love going on trips with you guys because, you know, we could go to Vegas and nobody is going to go, like, sit at the tables and drink whiskey all night. And uh, that will kind of – it won't trigger me. Like, I don't crave it anymore. But it's not a good influence to be around. So it's nice. Well, Jeff, I am glad that you didn't get arrested. I appreciate that you came on The Views Podcast. I don't give a shit. I wish I did so I don't have to be here. Thank you, Jeff. Bye. All right, guys, this next segment of the podcast is called Joe's Senior Me Podcast. It's where we give our editor friend Joe 25 seconds to say and do whatever he does in return for editing our podcast. And we're live in three, two, one. Joe's Senior Me Pod, 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 Podcast. Joe. Oh, oh my God. So many people showed up tonight. Thank you guys so much for coming out to Madison Square Garden. Unbelievable. You guys sold this place out in. 25 seconds. Do you want me to talk during these or do you just want me to give you your, your, your time? David, we're in the middle of a live podcast in New York. Can you please pipe down? <laughs> Guys, that was David Dobrik. That's weird. Bro, you waste your fucking time, Joe. You waste your time with this. Well, that's all we have for today. Yes, Thank you guys for coming out. We'll all right, that's all. Sorry, that was that was Joe. Um, he's not coming back next week again. Big waste of time. I do have some bad news, and I know you guys. You guys are probably like, "What can be worse than that fucking teeny weeny podcast?" What? Well, it's uh, my friend Jason had to run, so instead I replaced him with a new co-host for the time, and it's celebrity DJ Dylan Francis. <laughs> Dylan, say hello. Hello, 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 hello. That's good. Give them something. Give them something that they could like know you by. Like, when um, you bam, bam, get 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 low when the whistle go. Bam, 
<laughs> so that's Dylan Francis. <laughs> that's the guy. First, so first of all, that song's huge. That's your song. Yes. You made that song with DJ Snake. But you take a hundred percent of the credit, right? No, no, fifty percent. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. We both we both put in our fifty percent. <laughs> um. So how does it explain to me? I have so many questions about being. First of all, my assistant told me to ask. How are your as a DJ? Mm-hmm. How long have you been DJing? Ten years now. Ten years. Yeah. When did you like? When did it? When did you realize that it was like? Oh, this is your thing now. Like this is my new job. Uh, once I was able to buy or not buy, I was able to like lease my own apartment in downtown. Oh, okay. But it took a while. Yeah, and now you're making. You don't like talking about how much money you make. No. But I guessed. I make a, I make I make a fantastic living, and I really appreciate everyone that listens to my music. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Look, what man, are you giving I just hate when church? people talk. I, I, I hate when people talk about money. <laughs> seventy. He makes seventy five million dollars a month. <laughs> um, no, he makes good money. My assistant was wondering, what are your D, uh, what are your DMs like? Um, what are a DJ's DMs like? I, I don't I don't look at them anymore. You don't look at them. No. No, what was it like before when you did look at when them? When I did look at them, there were some that were really, really funny. Um, and, and, and then, you know, there's some interesting ones. Was it a lot of people throwing themselves at you? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. How, does that, how, do, how, do, you, how do you respond to that? You know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. I know. Where's your, where's your favorite? Po- okay. What was your first big hit song? My first big hit song was a song called IDGAFOS. And, uh, I don't give a fuck. Or shit. Uh-huh. And uh, it was the reason it was so big was because Avicii, uh, when he when he was alive, uh, rest in peace. Sure. Um, he he had a radio show and he played it on this radio show and that's like how. Oh, so Avicii gave you kind of your your start to the whole thing. I would say Diplo did, but Avicii helped me like break into more of the the um, European. Oh, that's crazy! You've been doing this for that long, and Diplo and Avicii have both been both been around longer than you have. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying that yes. like to rub it in, but yeah. like that's crazy. Because ten years is long. How long has Diplo been doing it? Diplo's been doing it for, oh my god, a long time. Yeah. Who long. do you think's a better DJ, you or Diplo? Diplo, for sure. And when you're standing next to him, and you guys are both pressing buttons simultaneously, can you? Does he push him harder than you? Faster than pushes you? Pushes him way harder and way better and faster and stronger. But, so I, I'm assuming he's a better DJ because you think he's he, he makes better music. Oh uh, no, he's a better DJ because his song co- selection and collection is in, in incredible. What makes a good DJ? Is it is it the the original songs you create or how you remix a, an older song? Uh, I think I think you're asking the wrong question. Okay, ask me, tell me what I I'm should ask. Tell you, I think you're asking what makes a, a better producer. Because for DJing, I think it's different because like you don't you don't really necessarily have to make originals to be able to be a really good DJ. If you can read a crowd really well and have a really good collection of songs where you're like, oh, I know what to play right now. That's going to make this, you know. Go oh, on. interesting. But then, but then I feel like if you're only remixing songs, then you can't like build your own name, right? Because then you don't have like your own music that's coming out. Yeah, you definitely need to have originals. Do you do more originals or do you mix more? Uh, I mean, I do both. You do both. And, and, yeah, what, yeah. What do you 50, like more? 50. I love both. Is DJing is DJing? Paint me a picture because I've never DJed. Yes. Is DJing easy, difficult? Is it is it time consuming? Is it relaxing? It's time consuming. You have to keep making edits, keep looking for new edits of songs. What's your favorite song? Right now, probably Campfire by Amine. Okay, cool. Or Blackjack by Amine. You don't like Abba? I love that. I love Abba. Abba or Abba? Abba. Abba. I'm saying it the way that you said it. And you, do you do you include like throwback songs a lot? Do you yeah. mess with? Do you fuck with the crowd? I've seen DJs do like yes, yeah. There's a video of me playing "Turn Down for What," and right when it says "Turn Down for What," I held the record so everyone's like, ah. <laughs> and then it goes. <laughs> uh, what's your, what's your um, what what other gags have you done? Because I'm, I'm I've curious. played Dancing Queen, you which have? I told you, yeah. I'll try to find a video of me playing it, but I, ha- I have. I don't get why it. people don't play that. Every time I throw that on at a party, it's, people fucking lose it. Yeah, it's like it's. I feel like a DJ. I love that song. When you have, do you? Let's say you're on a long car ride. Yeah, I'm curious about this. And someone's d- just. Do people automatically hand you the aux cord? Yes. <laughs> and I say no. This is a bad idea. Is that always your responsibility? Like, oh, Dylan no. knows what song to play. Hell no. No. I won't take that on. I already take that on every night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do it in a car. That's the worst kind of fucking pressure. Yeah. Like when you play a song and then you're, 
Especially when you, you look f- around. Yeah, when oh, you're in, when you're in the front seat of a car and there's like a bunch of people behind you and you hit play and all you're doing is just listening to see if people go, <laughs> "Yes, David." <laughs> That's so true. That's the fucking best. Every time, every time it happens in my Tesla, it's always I'm with my friend Todd. Mm-hmm. My friend Todd, like he really hypes me up. And like when there's new people that come in my car, he goes, "Yo, wait till you go for this car ride." David plays the best music. He, he says that every time. Really? Every time we get in the car, he says that, and it puts he so much. Sets a president. He puts so much fucking pressure on me. Because now I'm sitting up front. I'm like, what the fuck do I open with? But, <laughs> but I know, You're like a DJ for your car. Yeah, but Todd has like a really weak spot for Liana Lewis, Bleeding Love. Okay. So I always start with that. And then he's just in a good he's, mood. He's, you've, I mean, that you basically are doing what a DJ would do. Yeah. You get on the, the crowd side. Yeah. Because once the crowd has heard a bunch of songs that they want to hear, that they're like, man, I like this guy now. He's playing a bunch of records I like. You can go anywhere with it. Because they're on your side. Oh, interesting. Is yeah. that how you start off? With you legitimately the- just did what every DJ is supposed to do. Oh, that totally makes sense. Okay, yeah. so start off with songs that... Get them on your side, because then you can take them anywhere. You could play the weirdest, stupidest song, but since they were like... Well, he was playing amazing songs before. Like, he What song is always a hit for you? Like, What song is, is like, this? I know this is going to work. I just got to think about the rest of the music. Always a hit is like Lemonade. Or is that, yeah, that's what it's called, right? Lemon. lemon. It's lemon. Beyonce. No, no, no. Lemon. It's lemon. Sorry. What is the lemon song? Lemonade. It's the the one with um, uh, what's it called? Rihanna. Um, put up in a lemon, not to make a lemon. Oh, really? That song it, like is a guaranteed every single person can be like, oh yes, okay, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> Have you ever been booed off stage? Um, yeah. I uh, there was get a, the fuck out. There was. I mean, I didn't. Literally, get the I didn't fuck leave, out. I didn't, stage. I didn't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't leave the stage, so fuck them. Oh, really? <laughs> I stayed. It was a. Uh, I'll, I'll give you. I'll paint you the picture. It was this festival in Seattle, and it was uh, there. There these type of people called Wooks. Okay. They're like the really super hardcore dance fans, like re- like really crusty like people. The, the guys that like. Um, th- they make all the dancing videos at like festivals, like they like they have cool dance moves, or no, not no. Like that. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, there's probably some of them, but it's Wooks. like it was. It's very, it's very like heady music, quote unquote, where it's like they don't want to listen to any pop music. If you play pop, songs. oh, it's just like rhythm and beats, yes. right, and like electronic shit, exactly. Oh, interesting. So I played "We Found Love in a Hopeless Place" because I thought it was really funny because we were in <laughs> like the depths of Seattle, like we weren't. We weren't in the city. We were out like three hours outside in a forest. Yeah. So that was pretty funny. Yeah. And it was it was actually really funny too. I still laughed on stage. But I remember like the song hits out and everyone goes, Oh, boo! No! Get the fuck Swear out. Swear to God. Swear to God. And that was the first song you played that was by a popular like DJ? Yeah. They, they, they did not like Calvin Harris there at all. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then I, I think I got a... And then what'd you do? How'd you win him over? You probably played I mean, I, ABBA. I went into another song. You played Lemon? It, yeah. <laughs> Before it came out. You guys are going to love this record. <laughs> um, and Okay, so you... Uh, and you just played another song? I just played another song and that was it, yeah. You've never been booed off stage. I saw something, no. someone someone threw something at you once? Yeah, someone threw a can, a, a full RC Cola can at my face at a festival and I get, and I had to get stitches. Was it out of anger or was it out of support? I I think that they that they were definitely like, yes! <laughs> and, and it just I love me. Lemon! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Sure. And then they were probably like, oh no! <laughs> oh, well, did you have to get off stage then? I no, I kept playing, and then the the uh, production guy was like, "Hey, man, you're bleeding from your face. Yeah, you should go to the hospital." Did you go to the hospital after? Yeah. Oh, okay, stitches. Stitches. Oh fuck. I'm, I'm always I'm also always curious about this because I, I know like when singers or actors like when they're sick, it's hard for them to perform. But since you don't have to sing, is it when you're sick? I have you... to play when I'm sick. Yeah. So you just go out, right? And yeah. Does it suck or is it? No, there's there's like the adrenaline rush that you get from playing. You forget about being sick. Yeah, I don't have to sing or anything. I mean, my voice will crack for sure when I'm sick. So yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Do, do you sing? You don't make no. No, you don't sing at all. No, I don't sing. Do you? How often do you have a show? Every weekend, in I, Vegas, I invite you every single time, and you never want to come. That is not true. I have invited you to every single Vegas show, and you're always like, "Oh man, well, LA is really nice right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to leave." <laughs> but, dude, I'm in Vegas a lot. You, you pl- every weekend, you're playing in Vegas. No, the weekend that you went to Vegas, I, I think I wasn't there. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go. About. When's, when's the next show? Uh, I go tomorrow and, and 
Saturday. Oh, dude, it's going to be 75 here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> it's going to be. What hotel do you play at? G- uh, give yourself a at plug. The win. I, at, at the Encore. I play Encore Beach Club in Excess. Okay. And do you, you, don't, do you don't even need to worry about ticket sales? No. That's so fucking crazy. You I mean, I do, but. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, you, I'm you, just you, saying that, not <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, I don't have to worry. About it. Please come to the show. <laughs> um, and do you do you enjoy it? Mm-hmm. I love it. If that's you, why, I mean, that's why I do it. If you weren't doing this, what would you be doing? You're probably hanging out at this house more often. Hopefully, getting in a, some YouTube videos going. <laughs> did you like the YouTube video we made? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Or did you just say you liked it? No, I loved it because you didn't show how bad Jeff and I did. I'm glad that you didn't show how bad we did. For in what? Oh, in tennis. Yeah. Oh yeah, I only showed. I'm glad my... you just showed how good you are. Because, I, mean, <laughs> I just showed that my was highlights. the good. Yeah. I was like, thank God. Yeah, you were horrible. D- so Dylan, bad. Dylan and I played. Dylan, ch- actually, this was your idea. I know. Dylan challenged me to a game of tennis so for ten stupid. for ten thousand dollars, which is ridiculous. But I thought, whatever, I'll st- I'll take money from a DJ. I feel like that's fine. <laughs> I feel like that's completely fine. Yeah, so no. so we did it. Dylan was maybe the worst tennis player I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> And and not only that, but he fucking smashed his racket, like to, to uh, not even a set in, not even a set in. Yeah. So, so we had to. So so Dylan gave me the racket to play with, so I played with it for a little bit. He still beat us. <laughs> <laughs> and then um and then Natalie had to go run and get a new racket. Jason was the was the ringer. I didn't know. Yeah, Jason was great. Yeah, Jason was good. Jason's he, not here right now, unfortunately. He's actually the co-host of this podcast. I know, and now I had to fill in for him. Yeah. He's out in Vegas. He's doing a show. God damn it. I, dude, I, I He's invited the him encore. and he said, man, but LA is going to be really nice this week and I got to get back. <laughs> He'll be back right before your show. Um, who's the most respected DJ in the space? Probably Diplo and Calvin Harris. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Diplo. Okay, so I have a question. What is Major Laser? It's Diplo. Diplo is also in Major Laser. Yes. So he just didn't, he couldn't, he couldn't have enough with just being Diplo. He needed something else. Yeah, it's just like you. You got a podcast. I got a podcast, a YouTube, like a YouTube you channel. A I'm exactly like fucking Diplo. Yeah, you are Diplo. <laughs> I'm I'm going to be at Omnia this weekend. <laughs> yes, and I'm going to be performing with Jason on Playing stage ABBA for four over, hours. Yeah, four dancing hours queen. straight, just dancing. Just queen. yelling at me. Too. That's the only song I know. Dylan hit hit Dancing Queen. Dylan's really good when I say Dylan hit Dancing Queen. I want to just I want to have that in in all your vlogs where you can say that at the end, and then somehow I'm exactly where I need to be in press play. If I come to one of your shows in Vegas, can we somehow plan yes. it where you play Dancing Queen where, when I go? I can make the song stop and go, uh-oh, guys, the song stopped. And then David goes, hit Dancing Queen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> When's your next show? Uh, this weekend. <sighs> Don't worry. I'm going to be there next weekend, too. <laughs> <laughs> but what, and the weekend after that. When this weekend? Friday? Friday and Saturday. Friday night? Saturday, Friday afternoon, Saturday night. Afternoon, like at a pool party, Look, man. I'm just like Diplo. Okay, I can't get enough. <laughs> Wait, can we can we actually try that, or are you just saying that to be yeah, nice? You can come. Yeah, can we try the thing where? Oh my god, the yes. music stopped. Yes. Okay. That's easy. Come on. I love fucking with the crowd. Hit dancing queen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm so fucking pumped. Okay, I, Friday. Yeah. Okay. That's I, tomorrow, right? Yeah, I'll be. I'll go to Vegas for it for sure. Okay. You promise? Promise. Okay, I'll see you there. All right, perfect. I'll bye. see you there. Bye. All right, bye. All right, well, that's all the time we have uh, for celebrity DJ Dylan Francis. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. It's been wild. It's been crazy. What are your social medias? Where should people find you? What songs should they listen to? Just at Dylan Francis on everything. At D-I-L-L-O-N-F-R-A-N-C-I-S, not with an E-S. Okay, please don't make that mistake. A lot of people make that mistake. <laughs> I think so. Hey, I have a question. Yes. You can tell me the inside scoop. Marshmallow. Yes. Right. Why doesn't he perform at like seven different places at once well, and I, just collect I got, checks? I, that, that's true. I also got another question for you. Why is he allowed to speak when he's DJing, but he can't speak when he's anywhere else in interviews or anything? Oh, is that is that the rule? There's a challenge. I, uh, yeah. He can say one, two, three, get your fucking hands up, but he can't talk to anybody when they interview him. <laughs> Mic drop. Mic drop. <laughs> Thank you, Dylan Francis. My name is Jeff. We'll see you guys later. This is my views podcast. Bye. Bye.